My husband Brian was a bright light in the world, a fun-loving partner, devoted dad. With a silly sense of humor and his trademark smile, Brian always seemed to make me laugh. And I think, I think we got a deal going here. Thanks for coming. But this is a serious story about Brian and the relentless cancer that claimed his life. A cancer that almost always goes undetected until it's far too late. I'm telling my family's story with the hope that yours might be spared our grief. In the autumn of 2003, Brian looked great. He held our daughter Maggie's hand and walked her into kindergarten on her very first day. But just a few weeks after this happy morning, Brian would be diagnosed with esophageal cancer that had spread to his lymph nodes, liver, and lung, the end stage. We did everything possible with the available chemotherapy to save Brian, but he died just six months after his diagnosis. Dr. Gary Doolittle was Brian's oncologist. The problem with it is people don't develop symptoms of esophageal cancer until it's relatively late stage. Um, so the majority of patients that I see, or any oncologist for that matter, C's will be in a higher stage category. We know the medical community takes esophageal cancer very seriously. At the University of Kansas Hospital, where Brian was treated, was, uh, a tumor board meets each Thursday. Fortunately, there's no evidence of any uh, disease elsewhere. With a team approach to fighting this particularly aggressive form of the disease. Ron, why don't we talk here? I'm going to let you get... And through telemedicine, Dr. Doolittle treats esophageal cancer patients from across the region, like Ron from Horton, Kansas. Tumor is still present in, in the food pipe. None of the cancer specialists are sure why someone develops this cancer, but they do know one thing, more and more people are getting it. There are objective data, Elizabeth. I mean, the incidence of esophageal cancer is increasing. Like Ron, Brian was part of this frightening and growing trend. Let's talk a little bit about your friend, Brian Moran. What, what do you remember about him and his case? With Brian, the thing that I remember most is just unfailing optimism and so just a positive, absolutely positive outlook. But even Brian's positive outlook couldn't stop the cancer once it had spread. The key to this is going to be to figure out which people are going to develop the cancer and catch it at an earlier stage, screen and catch it earlier. And that's, that's where the real push needs to occur, I think. Now as the scope makes its way down. The main method of screening for esophageal cancer is endoscopy. While the patient is sedated, a doctor puts a scope equipped with a video camera down the throat and into the stomach. This woman has been complaining of heartburn and acid reflux. What we're looking for typically in screening patients with heartburn is to see if they develop what's called a Barrett's esophagus or Barrett's epithelium, which is a pre-malignant condition of the esophagus. Her scope shows she does indeed have Barrett's, that precancerous state. Now, Dr. Mullis can treat it. The trick along the way is to stop the progression of that process by treating the heartburn effectively, stopping it before it gets to Barrett's or following the Barrett's very closely before it gets to malignancy. Brian suffered terribly from heartburn as long as I knew him, but we didn't have enough information to know he should have been regularly screened. Oh, I wish Brian had been scoped five years before I met him. Ironically, I too have chronic heartburn, and after what happened to Brian, I made an appointment to get it checked. All right, Elizabeth, this morning we're going to do the esophageal capsule on you. There is a brand new screening method. What we'll do next is we're going to go ahead and put three leads on you. The camera pill. It's easy. You may elevate your head a little bit. No big preparation, no sedation, just swallow the capsule and wait about 20 minutes. And it's the absence of things. You don't see an ulcer, you don't see a stricture, you don't see a cancer. In my case, the camera pill showed everything is okay. I think the image quality is exceptional. But millions of people suffer from acid reflux and many believe it would be too expensive to check everybody. So who should be screened? I think anybody who has long-term heartburn, requires constant medication for months and months and years, those people definitely need screening for Barrett's. Before he died, Brian decided he would like to be in a news story that would focus on the fight against esophageal cancer. You have done so much. We shot his final chemo treatment, not knowing, of course, it would be his last. Even near death, Brian still kept that unfailing optimism, that smile I will always remember, doing his best to make me laugh. Must be nervous because you're going to be on TV. Oh. <laughs> and although his story did not have the happy ending we wanted, Brian will leave a legacy, I hope. 
I feel certain Brian would want me to let you know what happened to him so that you can protect yourself and the people you love.